Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up our uh, vectors lesson with the final example problem. Okay. So with this last problem that we have here, number three, is a plane is traveling at 400 miles per hour with a bearing 40 degrees east of north. There is a wind of 50 miles per hour blowing north. If no correlation is made for the wind, what are the final bearing and ground speed of the plane? Okay. So let's go ahead and what the uh, final bearing and ground speed is, basically that's going to be the resultant vector of our plane in our wind. Final bearing means your direction. If it ever asks for your ground speed, that's going to be the magnitude. Okay, So let's go ahead and figure out what the heck is even going on here. So we've got our east and our north. Okay. The plane is traveling at 400 miles per hour, and it's 40 degrees east of north. Okay, And so I start north, and I want to go 40 degrees east of it. Okay, So here's going to be my plane vector. And it's 40 degrees east of north of that. And then, as for my wind, your wind is blowing 50 miles per hour, but directly north. right? And so my wind vector is my wind vector. Okay. And it's going north a few degrees. So here are my two vectors. And so with that, let's find their mag or find their components, and then from there we can find our resultant. And so my plane vector, let's take a look at the x component. The x component is positive, but notice how even though it's positive, it's gonna be a positive, uh, the magnitude is 400. Right, magnitude of p, let's make sure we note those. Those are 400 miles per hour. Magnitude of w is 50. Okay, so for our P, it's going to be a positive 400, but it's opposite my angle of 40 degrees. Because it's opposite my angle, I'm going to go sine of 40 degrees. And as for the X, or sorry, the Y component, the Y component's also positive, so it'll be a positive 400, but it's adjacent. Because it's adjacent to my angle, it's going to be cosine of 40 degrees. So let's go ahead and put those in the calculator. So 400, uh, let's see, 400 sine of 40 degrees is going to be, we'll call it 257.12. So 257.12. And as for the y component, 400 cosine of 40 degrees, 306.42. So 306.42. Cool. So this is my plane vector. Nice. We're going to be using this in a sec. Let's find my wind vector. Well, your wind vector should be relatively easy because, well, you have nothing going on in the x direction, right? In the x direction, well, it's zero. All 50 miles per hour is blowing straight in the positive y direction. Cool. So now that I have my plane vector, now that I have my wind vector, I can find my resultant vector by taking the sum of the two that I got. And so the x component for this, you just add up the x components, which the 257 plus 0, that's just going to be, well, 257, and then of course that 0.12. And then as for the y components, you just add the y components together, and that's going to end up being 356.42. And this is my resultant vector. For me, let's find the ground speed first. I always think the magnitude is always the easiest, so let's go ahead and do that. And so the magnitude of r which will be my ground speed, is the square root of the x term squared, 257.12 squared, plus the y term squared, 356.42, and then squared. So let's see what happens when we add those together. So the 3, let's see, so let's go 257, 1, 2 squared, plus 356.42 squared, and you don't forget to take the square root of all that, and we get 439.48. So we get 439.48 miles per hour, and that would be the ground speed. As for the final bearing, that deals with your direction. Okay, so for my resultant vector, I had 257.12 in the x, and I had 356.42 in the y. 
And like I said, most time, more times than not, they're looking for this final angle, this th theta right here. And notice I know what my opposite is. Notice I know what my adjacent is. Opposite and adjacent, we definitely want to use tangent. So tangent theta, which is opposite, 356.42, over my adjacent, 257.12. So theta is going to be the arc tangent of this, right? Theta is going to be the arc tangent of this fraction. And so let's go ahead and put that into our calculator. And so we'll take the 356.42 divided by 257.12. And we'll go ahead and take the arc tangent of what we've got. When you do that, what we get is 54.19. So I'm going to get 54.19 degrees, but be careful with the way they want it because the way that I have it, this is 54.19 degrees north of east. So just be very aware of how they want it. In this case, I went ahead and did it north of east, but just be aware of how it's asked. And that's it. This is how vectors are going to be asked, okay? Vectors are going to be asked like this throughout your physics course, which is why it's really important to make sure that if you didn't catch that first video, make sure you have the foundations for all things vectors, and it'll make these problems a whole lot easier.